Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks so much uh, for being part of Sessions. That, that was phenomenal. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, how, how long have you guys been collaborating together, uh, performing? Quite a while, actually. We started playing together back in, what, 2005 or four? No, no four. Three. Yeah, three. Three. 2003. Yes. So five years, right? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm not too good at math. No. <laughs> So uh, uh, a lot of the pieces that, that you're doing are, are either Baroque or uh, from like 500 years ago is one of the pieces you performed. Is that a challenge to kind of arrange that for uh, arch guitar and violin? It's really fun. I mean, but we also, uh, I mean, that, that, music, um, that music is just as flexible as rock and roll is flexible or country music it really is or jazz you know I mean if I said uh, I was gonna play um, uh, I don't know uh, 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 what what's a jazz standard uh, all of me all of me if I was gonna play all of me like most people who know everyone who knows that tune da, 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 you know everyone knows that tune they know that's what they're gonna hear but if you're a jazz musician, you have no idea exactly how it's going to be played. And um, uh, classical music is the same. It's the same. Um, there has been a sort of tyrannical period in the 20th century where, every, where and, and there is music written where you really are supposed to very narrowly follow what is on the page. But before that, especially Baroque music, Renaissance music, that is not the way they played music. And, and not only that, I don't even care how they play music. <laughs> I really don't care. Because that's the true spirit of, of music from that period, is to, uh, is, to be very, is to be very personal with it. So yeah, so I mean, uh, taking a piece like uh, the Atanyan, that was written for four uh, recorders. I mean, if, you know, if four flutes are the first thing he wrote it down for. But like a violin and a plucked instrument, they're, they're just a, a timeless combination, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so the fun of it for us is to distribute the different parts back and forth to each other. And, you know what I mean? And um, right? I mean, that's... that's yeah, it, I, it's, I think it's, it's a little easier to, um, for old music like that if it's a few hundred years old because it might work on the flute, it could work on guitar, a lute, whatever, but something like Philip Glass, where it's a piano piece, that was, we had no idea, we, we yeah. actually started that one together, and uh, I liked Metamorphosis, and so did Peter, but the challenge was the, with the, all these different arpeggios on the piano, and how are we going to do that, and then we just sat around the, the kitchen table. That's just what we did. Yeah. We literally did that, and yeah. just tried stuff. Yeah. And then Peter went back and arranged it based on the things that worked around the kitchen table. Right. And Kenny, Kenny is a, also a jazz musician. And so, I mean, you know, when you look at the part of the piece where on the piano it's this arpeggio that goes like... You know, and that might not exactly be the, 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 the voicing that you'd want to do uh, on the violin, although actually that one happens to work on the violin. Um, but uh, why not play it idiomatically? Why not Meaning, play it? Right. Why not play it in a way on, on the violin that's easy, like the piano might be e easy, it might fit well in the hand on a piano. Right. And why not play it idiomatically for the violin? Yeah. So in essence, if I can get it done, is it kind of like making uh, the, these songs your own, these compositions your own? I, I think that if you, I think if you play Beethoven Moonlight Sonata, you have to make it your own. If you play, Strav if you're a conductor and you conduct, uh, you know, Stravinsky, you've got to make it. You I mean, otherwise, what's the, I can't even imagine why anyone plays music. I mean, and I don't mean like impose some big you on the music. Mm -hmm. For me, it's actually the opposite. The more I sort of subjugate myself to the music and say, this is so, I mean, I've always thought that way about music. When I was a kid, I grew up playing blues. And all I wanted to do was learn how to play, well, blues and rock and roll. And, and, and I wanted to play, like, get the, my guitar to play on some groove just the way it sounds on that record, get it like that. And the truth is, having that sort of attitude about something, that you're below it and you want to really capture it and be, be with it, that's how you actually f set yourself free. 
because you then, you, then, uh, uh, you then acquire vocabulary and experience. And then, and then, of course, if you have something to say, well then, you know, you, hopefully you'll be brave enough to just say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my own thing now too, you know, and, and, and those things become unconscious, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, that's what keeps it interesting and, and fun. Have you ever like gone back to your roots and, and played like blues or rock rock songs on the, the arch guitar? Not on the arch guitar because um, uh, for some reason nylon strings they're so beautiful to me for playing certain kinds of music. Um, the only like kind of rock and roll I ever heard on nylon string I liked would be like the like one song comes to mind like uh, uh, there's a song on uh, it's a certain kind of a sound you know like. Uh, uh, was it something in the way on the record uh, on uh, on uh, um, Nevermind the Nirvana song? You know, it's just like a sort of a, it's a very sensual, uh, uh, soft sound. You know, nylon string, and um, and also it doesn't bend the same way steel strings do. So the answer is no. But thank <laughs> God I don't. And I'm uh, yeah. But we played we played uh, Nirvana piece before. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which worked really. I thought which it worked well. I don't know. We just stopped playing it along. This like two thousand, literally two thousand five. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and then when you do something like that, like, uh, yeah, we have we've arranged um, pop, Prince. Really, I mean, yeah, pro, yeah, Prince. That's right. Other thing. Um, sure. And then you sort of, and then you really have to sort of abstractify it because you know. You don't have a drum. You know, are you playing with a drummer or not? You know, because if you're not playing with a drummer, then you have to drum with your guitar, and then that means you have to play a certain way. And uh, yeah, so so um, it's an interesting thing. And there's so much music to play in the world. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's it. You could never scratch the surface. You know. Now you've got a European tour com coming up uh, through Spain. Could you tell us a little yes. bit about that? Uh, well, I'm not going. He's not going. That's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, he's going to Ireland yeah, in yeah. August. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going over to play with a guitar orchestra, uh, some Spanish friends over there um, called Sinfonity. And uh, I'm going over in June. I'm going for a couple months, um, going to rehearse some with them, and then we're going to play uh, uh, up in Finland and Estonia. and. Um, and then I'm going to spend some time playing in the Netherlands, and uh, which I spent a lot of time years ago. Uh, I spent a lot of time there. And then I'll go back to Spain, play some, and back to Northampton, August <laughs> 2nd, I think. Yeah, something like that. When you get back, do you have any plans uh, in the near future to do any recording? Recording? Yes, we're going to start recording some of this modern, well, we call it modern repertoire, you know, like the Satie, it's only 100 years old. But uh, it's the Philip Glass is 80s, you know, which, uh, which I know would be like, you know, the Smiths or something, you know, but uh, it's not really new, new music. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to record some of the stuff we've been doing. And uh, uh, I, I, I've made a lot of records, usually when I, my solo repertoire, like I learn new pieces and when I got about 40 minutes of new pieces I make a new record that's that's kind of the way it's sort of come out for me you know awesome well yeah. thank you so much for for being a part of sessions thank you thank you thanks <laughs>